Hello and welcome to another episode of a Brothers Creed podcast where we talk about motivation, experiences, and explore the world around us. We're the Thomas Brothers. I'm Ethan. And I'm Jared. And today we're talking about a very important attribute, part of our Credo series that we've been doing for the past couple weeks. Uh, these are just kind of small bite-sized episodes that will really just give you a, a boost of information, something to think about throughout the day or throughout your week. And today's topic is being open-minded or the attribute of open-mindedness. So uh, critically important uh, in a lot of ways, and we've got some great information for you to share with you today. So let's dive in. All right, let's do it. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Most valuable commodity I know of is information. And that, my friends, is called integrity. That's called courage. Now that's the stuff leaders should be made of. Either you're somebody or you're nobody. You're not the devil. You're practice. So one of the things that uh, we actually did an episode a while ago that was called adaptability, adaptability versus inflexibility. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of talking about, you know, people that are super rigid, and not flexible with anything, and then people that are more uh, adaptable to their surroundings and everything else. And so I kind of was like, oh, some of the things that I was looking at and researching um, were we're kind of bringing back those memories a little bit. Um, so open-mindedness is something I think is a, a very important part of any person's creed to be able to, I guess, consider, consider all the options. Um, and just because you consider the options doesn't mean you have to, um, you know, I don't know, follow those options or believe those options or whatever else. But I think open-mindedness is just an, an openness and willingness to listen, mm -hmm. um, to consider. And um, so I, I had a, I had a list of uh, some things that kind of some of the, the benefits of being open-minded, but uh, how about uh, Jerry, you kind of get into the, maybe a little bit of the definition of it or what your thoughts are. Yeah. So I think that, this is such a cool topic to talk about the benefits of being open mind, but also some of the dangers. And I, and I have some of that today too. Um, one of the definitions I saw open mindedness that I really liked and kind of what you spoke to Ethan, it said it's the willingness to search actively for evidence against one's favored beliefs, plans, or goals uh, to weigh such evidence fairly when it is available. So it's being open to receiving other information or even in some cases seeking that out to gauge that against your own beliefs or your own plans and goals. Uh, and this is not a sign of weakness or indecisiveness or, or wishy-washiness, wishy-washiness, but rather uh, a sign of cap that you're capable and you're um, maybe more self-aware. Uh, and I think it's a sign of intelligence. Uh, what is it, Socrates? Uh, he said, you know, at the end of his life, all he did was just ask questions, you know. He's like, that's why they call it the Socratic method, right? It's just asking questions, asking questions. He would just go around town asking questions to all the young men around town. And I think they didn't they eventually kill him because he was just asking too many damn questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I think too, to go along with that, I think being open minded can be a sign of respect yep. towards someone as well. Um, you know, maybe you don't have uh the same understanding about something as someone else does. And you know, being open minded or maybe you think your way of doing something is the best way. You know, yeah. I'm a farmer. I've been a farmer for for, you know, 40 years and I know the best way to do it. Well, then, you know, some young buck comes around and there's a new technology that maybe is is easier or whatever else. And just being open minded could be a sign of respect and saying, OK, well, I, I, I understand that this could potentially benefit or maybe it's maybe it won't benefit me. Um but just listening and 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 hearing what someone else has to say could be beneficial or maybe not depending on your situation yeah i think i think being open minded can can be a sign of respect as well 
Absolutely. And also it makes you a much more interesting person. Like if you're in a conversation with someone, you know, thinking about uh, how to win friends and gain influence, that, that book that uh, is so, mm-hmm. is so cool. If you're, I think that book should be gifted to every single college grad and say, here, this is your corporate. Now that you've learned a couple things in school, now this is how to deal with people. Uh, you know, being open-minded, having conversations with people, being able to, uh, you know, have charm and and even talk about things that you're not even particularly interested in. You know how many guys come talk to me about football or sports, and I could care less about football, man. But, you know, I'm kind of interested. I'm tangentially interested. I hear things on the news occasionally. And, oh, yeah, I heard that the Panthers quarterback is uh, brand new and he has no idea what he's doing. What do you think about that? You know, I don't care about the Panthers quarterback. I don't care about that stuff. But some people do. And some people, you know, they'll, they'll share whatever. Um, so I think it's just it just is a way to uh, expand your horizons. Now, I, I guess if it's OK, I, I think I'll share one of the I want to share one of the, the instances in which I've been open minded. Um, I, I think that for, for me, uh, the podcast has really helped me to be much more open-minded about so many different things. Um, and just talking with different people, really getting to know, uh, different folks and their experiences. I mean, we've talked to tons of folks. I mean, we talked to, and we've researched lots of things too, uh, about different ways of doing things and different, uh, you know, strategies of, uh, different things that happen in history. You know, we've talked to people about building houses. We've talked about feng shui. We've talked about, uh, you know, meat, eating only meat. We've talked about, you know, tons of different stuff. We've talked about human trafficking. And one of the things that uh, I, I think I've really opened my mind to, initially I was really close. And actually, Ethan, you were funny. You were funny we were joking about this a little bit earlier because uh, uh, I've been doing jujitsu and I've said I was doing a competition coming up. Ethan was joking, saying, "Oh, I roll around with those sweaty guys," and I was like, "Yeah, that's exactly what I said." Uh, it's it's so funny that you know initially, probably back uh, you know twenty when we first started the podcast, maybe around that time, like yeah, you know, I, I was obviously I've been in the in the guy podcastosphere, I guess, and lots of people are doing jujitsu. You know, Jocko Willink does jujitsu. All these people, um, Joe Rogan and. Uh, it just was like everybody was doing jujitsu, and I was like, ah, oh, you know, it's kind of weird, you know, these guys just like rolling around and, and wrestling. You're like really intimate with each other, and uh, I know that uh, Jesse came over once, and we did an interview with him, and he actually we actually rolled with him for a little bit. And when you first start, it, it does feel kind of weird, uh, you know, to have someone sitting on your chest. Uh, if you're not used to being that <laughs> intimate with someone else, it can be weird. But actually. Um, and I, and then I started, uh, started about almost two years ago now, uh, a little bit less than two years ago. And I'm a four stripe white belt. Uh, so probably going to, I'm going to get my, my blue belt by the end of this year. And it's actually been really cool. Uh, it's something that I was, that was initially skeptical of, but I was open-minded enough to hear out, you know, and, and reach out to friends that do it. Uh, Matt K- Kaler, he's, one we had on early on in the podcast, we talked to him with him about cryptocurrencies. He's uh, encouraged me to to do jujitsu, Jesse, uh, and others. And I was like, yeah, I'll give it a try. And it's almost like a, a human chess, uh, and that you make a move, they make a move, and it's just, it's actually a, a lot of a lot more fun than I ever thought that it would be. And I think sometimes my natural uh, instinct is to reject things that everybody likes, uh, and so by being more open-minded, I actually found something that was really cool and a passion that, uh, that has kept me active. Uh, it's kept my mind going and has given me some self-defense skills, something I've been actually able to do with my, my boys as well. Uh, and I'm thankful for being open-minded enough to maybe get over myself and maybe this prejudice I had from the beginning, uh, listen to others and say, hey, you know, I'm going to try this. I'm going I'm to go out on a limb, even though it's something that I think might be a little bit weird at first. I'm going to go try it. And it's, and it's been really great. Yeah, I think that's a great example. Yeah, I remember you were hardcore against it. You're like, oh, man, you know, it's whatever. But yeah, getting into it, you're like, oh, well, this is actually kind of cool. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, I, that's a great example. Um, you know, I think being open minded 
and I had some of the positives and maybe we can go through some of the negatives too, but some of the positives that I had come across were, um, you know, just increased learning, being open-minded provides more opportunity for you to learn more things that you maybe didn't know about, uh, improved creativity, enhanced empathy. You can, you know, empathize with someone else and maybe understand their, their situation a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, better decision-making because you have more, uh, exposure to more options, more, um, perspectives, conflict resolution. Obviously, if you can be open-minded with the other person and their argument, it's going to help with that, uh, reduce prejudice and, and understanding what someone else's situation is adaptability. We kind of mentioned that earlier, uh, enhance problem solving, a stronger building, stronger relationships. I think that kind of goes with, um, potentially conflict resolution and then just promotes uh personal growth was mm -hmm. was something that you know encourages self-improvement and allows someone to be able to change if they're open-minded enough to see something that might be beneficial to them they can change yeah i think open-mindedness is ha goes hand in hand with that uh sunk cost fallacy you know if, if you're 95 percent the way up at mount everest but it's too dangerous to continue do you turn back because it's too dangerous to continue or, you know, Oh, I've already sunk so much cost into this. I might as well just keep going and then I'll die. You know, if you know it's too dangerous to continue. So that's kind of that rigid being too rigid versus adaptability that we had spoken more about before being open-minded enough, being open-minded is your ability to say, Hey, this has gone too far. I need to bail. Um, in that case with the sunk cost fallacy. Uh, yeah. Have you seen have you seen some of those dead bodies up on Everest? Oh yeah. There's tons Dude, of them. Dude, there's guys like you just like stepping over dead people on the trail. They're like landmarks, yeah. Yeah, dude, that's freaking crazy. It's wild. Side sidebar. Uh there's like one guy in a yellow jacket, I think, that he's yeah. like a, there's a couple of them along the, the trail. Yeah, they're like landmarks, like yeah. turn here, turn there. And it's so cold all the time they're just frozen. They don't crazy. decompose at all. The top of that mountain is absolutely trashed with stuff. If yeah. you look at the top of Mount Everest and like on pictures and stuff, it's like trash all over that thing. Ta air tanks, ribbons, all kinds of stuff. You know, mementos yeah. people leave at the top of the world, you know. I took a dump at the top of the world. <laughs> <laughs> You'd freeze your butt off if you did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have an interesting thing that, uh, so the dangers of not being open-minded. So I want to talk about that a little bit. And I think that, this is really interesting. So there's a guy that uh, wrote a book called Combating Cult Mind Control. Uh, his name was Steve Hansen. And he was someone who directly had, like, he was like, kind of in a, in a cult. Uh, and this was in the 1980s, 1988. It was, it was a published date for this. And then it was re-edited in 2018. But... Uh, it's interesting because we saw a lot of this with COVID where um, there was this cult mind control around don't listen to any fake news and you better listen to what the, the mainstream narrative is. And there was like this shutting down this, this close the, the, the government and the news media was trying to get you to be very close minded. And I, and I think that's interesting. Uh, if you think about it, in that sense or in any other sense, uh, one of the things that he talks about is he he talks about this bite model. So he says there's four components of the model. Bite. Behavior is the first one. Information, thought, and emotion. He says according to his bite model, if a destructive cult can effectively control one or more components, the others will tend to follow. For instance, restricting information can lead to control of thoughts which can, in turn, lead to change in controlled behaviors and emotions. His bite model is uh, based off of this Leon Festlinger's cognitive dis dissonance theory. Uh, and he adds, so, when, so it's pretty interesting. I want to go jump to that part about information because that's, you know, open-mindedness typically has to do with information, right? Interesting what he says here. Uh, he says, cults control information to rob people of the ability to make informed decisions. He says they do this sometimes by separating them uh, physically far away. So you think like, think like Jonestown or Waco, right? These people are way out in the middle of nowhere. Or think about 
COVID, like with the, with the media, they're like, um, don't listen to any other news in the mainstream news. And we're canceling, you know, we're canceling uh, these doctors who say that ivermectin works. And then later they used ivermectin with the queen. Uh, so, you know, they, they, that was like in 2021, I think they used ivermectin. They've come out, they've come out now and said it's effective. Yeah. So it's just like, okay, so what is the, whatever the mainstream narrative, they want to say, this is the narrative. It says, however, even cults that do not use physical distance can control information, information such as smearing all outside sources as propaganda, satanic, or false. So, um, and then it says like, it's, it also you know, it says like members of these cults. So like, even situations where you saw in our country during COVID, you could say someone who was like on board, like triple backs boosted, you know, like some, some folks I work with at work. Hashtag like, triple vaxxed. Hashtag triple vaxxed. I just got my recent booster. And I'm like, dude, um, it's, you know, he says, he goes on and says, members are also discouraged from speaking critically about the cult one to another. Instead, members are taught to, to seek out higher ranking members and mentors for assistance. Contact with outside family and friends and especially like ex people that were inside that is frowned upon as those people could most clearly articulate what the cult is doing to the new member. And so in some cults, they said like even letters and phone calls are screened. And so I think we, we see this broadly in our society and, and even sometimes in micro versions too, uh, that, if someone is trying to control the information that you have, uh, question that. Uh, question that. And if they're trying to make you less open-minded, I would uh, question that approach and be uh, be wary. Uh, weary. No, not weary. Wary of that. Be wary of that. And uh, so that's, I think, one of the disadvantages uh, oh, that comes with not being open-minded that everybody should watch out for yeah yeah i think that's good i mean i think to a certain extent i think we all in every single one of our relationships and and interactions with each other we all control information i mean i think there's very few people even spouses and stuff like that that you are solely completely and utterly honest with um in everything you do you know sometimes you hold back a little bit of information here or sometimes you know you're teaching your kids but you don't want to give them too much information at once so you you know give them kind of bit by bit um yeah but yeah i mean i could definitely see how <clears throat> kind of that that bite method right especially with you kind of get like a mob mentality, like you were saying around, um, uh, COVID and stuff like that. And I was just watching this thing and some guy was actually, it was Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mm -hmm. You know who that guy is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he was talking with a guy about the vaccine and the guy was like, well, you know, but the vaccine, like really? And he was like, oh yeah, you know? And, um, the guy goes, but what about like all of the doctors that that came out and said like came out against it? Like these are just as professional and just as researched doctors as as all the ones that were saying it. And um, and uh, Tyson was like, oh well, let's imagine that um, you you the somebody built a brand new bridge, and uh, this brand new bridge went across the this r raging river. And he was like, um, nobody's ever been on this bridge before, and you're going to be the first one to go across it. And you uh, hired, or no, not, not you hired, but you talked to a 100 engineers. And he was like, if 97 of those engineers said, oh, don't cross it, it's not safe. But then three of them said, oh, you'll be fine, you know, cross it, you don't, you, you'll be completely fine. He was like, he was like, uh, who, who, would you cross the bridge? You know, and the guy was like, well, what if it's more like 60, 40? And what if the government 
said to the engineers, if you tell them not to cross the bridge, then we'll pay you, you know, a hundred thousand dollars or threatened them with their career to say, if, if you tell them, yeah. if, if you don't tell them not to cross the bridge, then we're going to destroy your career and your work and all this sort of kind of stuff. We're going to cancel you. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, oh, well, that's just conspiracy theory. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, dude. Every time somebody says conspiracy theory, look a little bit deeper. Yeah, I've had a lot of conspiracy theories come true recently. <laughs> yeah, um, I I had uh, quickly uh, one one last story about um, kind of a, a oh, how open mindedness kind of changed the perspective of of someone's view, uh, and this is the story of Willie Peter Reese. He was a German soldier, and so this is kind of the perspective of a a German soldier's perspective during World War II. So uh, Peter was a young German soldier during World War II. And he kept very meticulous journal uh, in everything that he did. And so he, like many other German youth uh, during uh, World War II, was conscripted, conscripted, or, or um, uh, drafted. What you would call it? Yeah, uh, into the the German military, uh, drafted into the German military, and he was sent to the Eastern Front to fight with Russia. And during this uh, brutal, brutal part of the war, when Germany was fighting Russia, uh, he witnessed all of this just just terrible, terrible things that were happening and the, the, the lives that were lost. So over time, he, as he faced kind of these harsh realities of, of battle, and I saw the suffering that was afflicted on on both sides, on the, the German side, which is his side, and the Russian side, he took meticulous notes and and journals about his feelings and how he was feeling. So you can tell um, in, his, in his journal that he really began to question kind of the ideology of the, the, the whole war, right? And what he had been taught since, you know, a little kid in Nazi Germany. Until he was uh, drafted into conscripted into the to military service, and so he wrote in his journal about how he really struggled and uh, w- with this conflict, and that he expressed kind of a deep empathy for a lot of these German soldiers that he was encountering, and he even wrote in this journal that as he uh, was kind of saw these German soldiers and they had captured a whole bunch of them that he described as several moments of compassion where he would actually give his food, his rations to some of these ger- or these uh, Soviet Russian prisoners of war that were literally starving to death, despite the risks that, you know, he would suffer if, if they found out. So as his diary progressed, you could kind of feel this growing disillusionment with the Nazi Germany and just this inward change of how he began to view the enemy, that he no longer saw them as just a faceless Soviet soldiers, that he was there and they were the enemy and he was there to kill them. But he started to see them as human beings that were just caught up in a situation that was just as tragic as as his was. And so, unfortunately, uh, Peter died actually on the Eastern Front in battle and on the Eastern uh, Front, like I said, in 1944. But his diary uh, was saved whenever they uh, kind of removed the belongings off of his body. He had it on him. And his family actually came forward with it years later, and it really provided a, a very unique perspective on just the transformation of just an ordinary soldier and how he, you know, from our view, he was on the bad side, right? From his view, he was on the good side because that's what he had been trained and and, and probably beaten into his whole life. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was able to be open-minded and kind of see the reality of the situation for for everyone, not just himself, and how I mean that open mindedness, open mindedness and empathy, um, really kind of was able to change who he was, and I'm sure he was an example to other soldiers as well. 
Yeah. What an interesting story. That's uh kind of reminds me of uh what's it uh Private Dawson Hughes. What was the guy's name that was the preacher who was a non combatant? Yeah, um what is it? Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge. Yeah, so Yeah. He, he was, was up up on the ridge. He was saving he was saving not only American soldiers, but he was also lowering down Japanese, uh, soldiers. Japanese soldiers that were really injured too. So it, it was like the 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 army was kind of open minded enough to to send him in, and even though he was a non combatant and wouldn't ke- shoot, wouldn't carry a rifle, uh, and look what happened. Something amazing happened. So like in that case, like kind of the open mindedness of his open mindedness too of of treating everyone as God's God's children kind of was. It's pretty crazy. Pretty yeah. Cool. But it took a lot of convincing for the U.S. military to be open-minded. Yeah. Now, what I will say is that I don't want open-mindedness to be confused with being woke. Right? There's two very different things. Well, open-mindedness is just considering things. Uh, having the ability to consider things. If someone that's woke wants to come and talk to me about their woke ideals, I can listen that doesn't mean I have to incorporate that into who I am or into my personal creed, yeah. unless I feel like they're making a compelling argument, and then yeah, I will. You know, I feel I feel like being woke is kind of almost for gain, for social gain or political gain or whatever else. But just being yeah, open mindedness. There's no personal gain to uh, being open. Well, I mean, I guess there can be personal gain to being open mindedness if you benefit from change, uh, but there's no requirement of that. Yeah, I think it's also pretty arrogant. It, it's a. Sh- I think being not not being open minded is a show of arrogance that you think you know everything, uh, and you know you you don't want to be in that camp. So yeah, it's an important attribute. Add it to your uh, add it to your creed so that you're not arrogant, uh, so that you can explore new opportunities. That's what this whole podcast is about. Uh, is about being open minded and about exploring new things and motivating you to 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 go out and and learn something new and have new experiences. That's what that's what this whole thing is about. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't caught on by yep. now, so add it to your personal creed. And you know, thank you all for joining. Thanks for listening to the podcast. We appreciate your your downloads. We appreciate your listens. Uh, we appreciate any feedback you have for us. And let's build our creed together. All right, let's do it.